YouTube Wednesday. I am going to make another Loctite foam mask. I'm going to do some things differently this time. Uh, I'm using uh, my head form, but the plaster effects of us will work just fine. I'm going to plastic this head form. Okay, the plastic will keep the spray foam from sticking to that. Again, use Loctite, don't use great stuff. Here's what's different. I'm going to put a head sock on it, and I'm going to do the mask onto the head sock. I do want to make sure that I don't have a neck, so this is going to look all bunched up at the bottom. That's because there's no neck on this, because it's my neck. And I'm going to do a zombie. I did a skull last time, I'm going to do a zombie this time. I'm also not going to wet this, because I want the foam to grab. I'm establishing the line of the mask, and where it's going to go. I have it on a turntable, so it's kind of easy. I have the straw a proper length away from the mask itself. And I'm stacking each bead on top of the other. Now, so far, this is going way better than it has any right to. I do feel like I'm decorating a cake. I'm gonna talk you through this application project. I'm gonna do a couple coats of this. Control is key. You can see I'm trying to uh, control what's happening and how much spray is coming out. I am consistent. If I get this in one bead, I'll be the spray foam on a head form champion. That shouldn't have gone that well. Let me get my water sprayer and I will hit this. I'm going to wait seven minutes. I'm going to come back. I'm going to pat this down. I'm going to do another layer. Uh, I want to find where my eyes are. I'm actually going to dig out my eyes a little bit so that they're not included. And that also helps me build up right away uh, some features. I'm just tapping this down here. So I want this to homogenize kind of into one. And I want it, like, I could get it pretty smooth, but I want it to have a little bit of texture to it, you know? I don't want it to be, like, super smooth. Kind of putting in, you guys can see, I'm just putting in some facial features here. See how sculptable that is? Isn't that remarkable? Okay, I'm going to add some more. That'll be in here. Here. Add on to this cheapo a little bit here. head wound up here. Got a little opening wound. Wow, you can do like a lot of stitches really easy. And then go back and glue in the stitches. Okay, so it's been about four minutes. Uh, this stuff is going much faster than normal, but uh, it does appear to be at least somewhat shapeable. So I'm going to start on my ears here. And it's kind of like you're working clay. You can pinch it, pull it. And all of these that are just such vague shapes, you can really tighten up. I can, I can get a smooth finish if I want one, but I, I like the texture. Uh, I want to do these as like some cheek tendons. 
so you, you can really make them go down into almost nothing. I'm adding some detail on the, this makes the hard foam moldable again. The heat does, and then I can shape it. See how soft it is again? And I'm just putting in some texture lines. Wait 15, 20 minutes for that to dry. I will be back. Now I have an inner dilemma. Do I peel it off the head first or do I paint it first? Uh, I think I'm gonna peel it off the head first because that's gonna be a bit of a chore. Uh, it, doesn't, it won't want to come off of the head form, but it will come off the head form because I will it. And I'm thinking that the foam is gonna rip and that's okay. The foam will rip, but then um, the head sock should help pull it back together, right? I'm gonna pull these eyes out here. Let's cut another little hole for breathing in the mouth. Wait like three days before you try it on. I have spray paint fumes. I have fumes from the foam. So you don't do it right away. <laughs> Is that the mask to your hole? Mm -hmm. That's my ear hole. <laughs> we did it. That could have gone way worse. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush this with flesh. And now is when all these textures are gonna pay off. Look at all that work that was done for you. Okay, this has to dry and then I can do another layer of the flesh. Well, a sweet texture in there, though. I like that. Second verse, same as the first. Another dry brush of flesh. Okay, this layer has to dry. And then I'll do one more layer with white and flesh together. And that'll probably be my flesh base. Flesh and, oh, some white. We'll do a lot of blood on this and I want that to pop. So I want a nice pale flesh tone. A little bit of white. Gonna do some bone plates on the head here. I am gonna hair this, but this will still, I'll make sure you see this around the hair. You a better painter than me? Probably. So maybe just don't go as simple. Everywhere I cut, I'm putting black in those holes. Cut the mouth, remember? I cut some ear holes here. 
black in those. We'll do that edge in there, add some depth. This is a claret wine color of 2X. I really like this color. It's like an aged blood. It's like poor man's airbrushing around the eyes. Leatherface mask the same way. Just to give a little bit of, I know it's a zombie, I'm gonna give a little bit of life to it by giving a little bit of red mist. Red mist always makes a flesh tone more alive, more lively. Getting some splatter. We go heavy on there. Let that drip down. Drip down. A little red mixed with my black spray paint here. Hit the nose, nostrils. This is from Beast Effects. This is Rue Blood. This is our blood mix that we use for masks and props and such. From StiltBeeStudios.com. Probably should let that paint dry. But you can see, that'll, that'll dry looking very wet. This is an acrylic nail set that you can get at beauty supply stores, dollar stores, whatever. Let's just say that they are around and they have a shape kind of similar to teeth. These happen to be green, not ideal. Many times they're clear. You can find them in white. I'm just going to shape them a bit. teeth come in pairs, one on each side of the mouth, I can use the other part of this to make the other tooth in that, right next to it. I think that I want to go a little extreme with the uh, bottom, and I'll do these bottom ones longer, and that'll look scarier.
Just doing a second coat on these teeth. So they are whiter. This is uh, it's just gloss purple. It's just purple. It's not like eggplant. It's not um, ripe persimmon. Uh, no, none of those. It's uh, it's just just purple, but it's shiny purple. Uh, so this is wool roving is what it's called and it uh, comes in this long dirty nasty rope it's like you know someone's dreadlock cut off but it's it's clean Unlike it's clean it smells a bit like a sheep but it should smell like a sheep because it's from a sheep amount here. Normally I would cut these off. Uh, I would cut them in half and I'd lay them like shingles. I'm gonna do the same thing but I'm just gonna do it a little. I'm gonna use the whole hank of hair, not half. I'm gonna do it a little longer. So you put down silicone caulking like that. make sure that you don't put too much on at a time. If it's too thick, then it doesn't all get in the silicone, then it falls out forever. So make sure you have it thin enough, it's spread out enough where it all gets some silicone. Pearly whites are too pearly white. I wanted a brown. What I have is a uh, metallic dark copper. Good enough. Put it heavy at the bottom of the tooth. Pull up. So when your paint dries, you didn't want it to dry, the answer is more paint. Because spray paint activates the paint underneath of it, and before that would not slide and move around. But now, this should slide a little bit better. There we go. That's nasty.
Go, make stuff. It's time for Patreon shoutouts. For behind the scenes footage of not only the Stilt Beast Shop, but Dark Hour as well, head on over to Patreon. A big thanks to Jeff Schreiner, Alex, and Brandon Nelson. Once again, thank you so much to those who help us continue to make monsters. Now go make stuff.